So we've got this unit right now in demo mode so that we can see some history here of some fetal heart rate monitoring and some contractions as well. Um, just kind of going across the top here, you've got fetal heart rate one, fetal heart rate two. Again, this is a, a model that will monitor twins. Um, you've got your TOCO pressure here to monitor contractions. There's a couple different ways that you can configure this unit based upon user preference. Right now we've got it set up where the tracings for fetal heart rate one or baby one and baby two will actually overlap. You can actually set this to offset it as well so that one will be lower than the other one. Um, again, that's a user preference. I find that most practitioners would like them to overlap so that if they glance at the screen, they don't see something that would appear to be out of whack because the, the lines are offset. Down here is gonna be your, uh, your contractions. You can see here uh, the movement, what's going on. Um, the, the machine will operate on the toggle switch as I move this uh, trim knob, if you will, back and forth. It'll highlight various parts of the screen. It's very easy to use. Um, you just highlight the area that you want, press the button, this is actually on this icon right here is your alarm review. So you can quickly click on that button and scroll through all the, the various alarms that it's signaled and you can set the alarm parameters obviously to your liking. This right here would be your print function. We actually don't have printer uh, paper installed on this but if you wanted to print you would highlight that area. This is here your new patient setup is this icon. You can put in a patient ID enter the patient ID here using the trim knob. Same thing with the name of the patient, enter the patient name, and you would just hit OK. Um, this is your main menu screen. We'll get back to that in a minute. I just want to show you that you can scroll over and quickly just press and change the volume of the of the alarm, or excuse me, the, the, the volume of the fetal heart rate one, or if you switch it to this one, fetal heart rate two. We have this silence just for the demo purposes so that it doesn't interfere with our audio. Um, you'll notice that intermittently we will get an alarm that will sound here. And when you highlight down here on this icon, this will quickly pick up your different uh, user IDs that you've entered. And this patient, we didn't actually configure a specific patient ID for this one, uh, but it gives you a default, it assigns automatically a default number if you don't enter one and the date we started this exam actually yesterday and it's been running for quite some time. Um, so we can click on that and actually click over here to, to the scroll button and ask it to scroll through some of the history. Right now we're going backwards to see some of the contractions and what the fetal heart rates have been doing. Now we can switch it to forward, hit forward and it'll come back all the way to real time. So again, this, this machine will store uh, 60 hours of data so the practitioner, or the nurse, or the doctor can come in and quickly review the history of this patient um, and make sure everything's okay or if they miss some sort of event that they want to scroll back to specifically, they can quickly do that. If we jump back over here to the menu screen again and press the button, you've got a series of options here that you can, you can set up. Um, I always recommend that you first go to the setup, or excuse me, system key, and we can enter in a password here to enter our user preferences. The password is 999, and that is located in your user manual as well, in case you ever forget it, you can refer to that. Um, this is where you'll have some of your default settings, factory settings. You can clear your data. Right now we have it in demo mode, obviously. If we want to restore factory defaults, we could go here or clear the history of the data, we would select this. Um, product information is more specific for what version software this particular device is running. Network setup, you'd want to go into this screen when you're configuring it with a central nursing station to, to say what device it is to correspond with the proper bed number in the system. Um, factory settings would be in here, that's more for our engineering team if they ever needed to perform some sort of an upgrade. Recording configuration, you can record or change here the, the, the line width, how thick it actually prints for fetal heart rate 1, fetal heart rate 2, um, the TOCO, uh, the automatic, automated fetal heart rate is, uh, movement as well, and the paper setup, you can change your paper setup here too. This will actually take um, two, two different size uh, paper 
um, that you can configure it in the screen. Language obviously comes built in with Chinese, Spanish, Polish, French, German, Turkish, um, a variety of other ones. We'll just leave it in English. Um, beat to beat or, or average settings would be here. And we'll OK out of this screen. So again, that was the system setup. It's kind of where you want to start, I think, with this monitor to get it configured the way that you like. Date and time, pretty self-explanatory. You can see here that this has already been set. We'll just hit OK and get out of that screen. Um, fetal movement is, on, is set to high. You can adjust it here to high to low. Your baseline, you can adjust it here. Your gain, adjust it here. And you can turn the, the, uh, the auto fetal movement on or off in this section as well. Recorder is going to be your print speed, how fast you want it to print. Um, your timer, your self check, um, whether or not you want it to be offset for fetal heart rate 2 if you are monitoring twins. You can change your baseline here to either a plus or minus 20. Um, most people in the states, if they do use that, they set it to plus 20. Um, print ending beep, high or low, you can change your alarms there. You can set your alarms here for how you want the, to be notified. If, if something is, uh, there's an alarm right there. If something is uh, out of the ordinary, you can put it in numeric or a text format. Change the, uh, the volume from low to high low, medium, or high, I should say. We have this actually set in low. Silence duration, when the alarm is going off, I can hit this silence button here. I should have just taken that opportunity to show you that. If I hit it once, it'll, it'll silence it uh, inf you know, infinitely right now, how it's set. Otherwise, we can set it to one, two, or three minutes. Next time it goes off, we'll hit that button. Um, single signal loss delay, um, if you, if you mom moves around and your, and your probes uh, lose their positioning, you can either be notified immediately, which would be set to zero, or 10 seconds up to a minute. And your alarm setup is on. You can set it here for your beats per minute if it goes below 120 or down you know, to 95. You can set it however you like there. I think we have this one set for a pretty wide range so that it doesn't continue to beep during our video here. Same thing with your high alarm, your alarm delay like we mentioned, and your, your alarm volume. Jump up here to general settings. Key volume, um, I have it off, and that would be every time we, if we turn it on to low. Oops, we'll hit that silence button that time. Uh, we'll jump back into here. Uh, so we're in key volume if we go to low or high. Every time I turn the knob now, it makes a sound. Um, and you can change the, the level of that sound. Again, I have it set to off so it doesn't interfere. When you do change it, you have to hit OK and then go back in. Um, you can change the screen color of the background from black to green to orange to blue. I'll change it to orange if you like. Start up music when it reboots, it'll make a funny noise. You can turn that off or on. I prefer to have it off. Um, Smart Notes is on, and that will actually allow you to, uh, to make a note in the system if you see some sort of activity that you want to notate in the document. Um, you can do that. You can turn that on or off here. And your CTG analysis, you can turn that off or on in this menu as well. So we'll leave that on. So obviously, when you have a new patient, you want to go to start monitoring. Um, how you set it up, it, if you want it to print right away, yes or no. Um, if you want to enter maternal information, it's either on or off. We have this set to on. And then the volume level is set to 1. You can crank it all the way up to 10. So when we do have a new patient, you can see here that our display color changed because we changed the background from black to an orange. Again, it's just a configuration. I'm not quite sure if that shows better on the video or worse. Um, but again, when you have a new patient, actually, you know what? I'm going to change that back because I think that the black just looks a little bit better.
Okay, so we quickly change that black. I think that'll probably show up a little bit better in the video. When you do have a new patient, um, you can configure this uh, in this, uh, my, the menus that we just went through of how you want it to uh, operate when you have a new patient. Um, you've got your start button right here, so if I hit start, if you recall, we have it set to ask for an ID and a name that we would enter here using the, the trim knob and we would hit OK and boom you can see that this automatically gave us since we didn't enter a patient ID it didn't show here or a name it just associated today's date but this sent this started a whole new demo for this particular patient and again if we wanted to go back and look at the data from a previous patient um, we would do that in this screen down here but here you can see that we've got our movements uh, set up already I think I guess demo it's not going to set up to st actually store the previous data but fairly easy to use, um, not a whole lot of icons on the screen, pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll go through some more of the buttons. We, we talked about the start stop uh, button here. This is our silence for our alarms. This is our auto zero so that when we place the, um, the toco on mom, we want to obviously the pressure of how you apply that belt is going to vary every time you put it on. So once you put the toco on, you want to auto zero and that'll kind of calibrate that pressure based upon that mom so that it knows to pick up the contractions appropriately. You've got a mark button here. So if you wanted to, uh, if you recall, we left smart notes on. So if we have some site an event that we want to mark, you can hit that button. You can enter drugs that maybe have been administered and it's got some drop downs here. Or uh, maybe the position, you moved mom around a little bit. Uh, membranes, procedures, other, I mean there's a couple different ones here, reason, mark, so you can use that button right there to, to actually note in the system some sort of event that took place. Um, here's your print button to start and stop your printing. Um, channel is going to switch um, the channels between the fetal heart rates here and here, your audio alarms and NIBP which actually doesn't apply to this monitor that would be used for the F6 Express version which has the maternal parameters that we mentioned. So again just a very quick overview of the F6 it's a great fetal heart rate monitor uh, perfect for non-stress uh, non test systems or uh, procedures and again there's a variety of uh, configurations available single fetal heart rate monitoring, twins fetal heart rate monitoring or uh, DECG IUP is also an option and then we've got the F6 Express version uh, that we'll cover in another video that adds the maternal parameters as well. Appreciate your interest. If you have any questions whatsoever, we're always here for support. Uh, just go to our website, EdenUSA.com, or call us on our toll-free number at 888-850-4597. Again, thank you for your interest in the Eden USA's F6 fetal monitor, and we certainly appreciate your support.